All right, uh, we're going to talk about front end setup. Uh, these are my tyres. They are 225 40s on a 9.5 wide rim. Uh, if you're wondering why am I talking about the tyres, well, you'll understand in a second. Uh, but I recently had to replace these. Uh, yes, my wheels are incredibly dirty. Uh, these I had, or still have, Ferrodo pads on there, and they uh, they stopped really well, but um, very dirty, and uh, I'll show you something else. So uh, just doing a couple of bits and pieces to the car, changing the oil, that kind of thing. Now... What I've got here is, I don't have the standard brakes. These are Brembo's from a Mitsubishi Evo. Uh, so ro rotors are actually Evo 10, so 350 millimeters in diameter. Calipers are Evo 5 to 9. So not Evo 10 calipers, but Evo 10 rotors uh i have got new rotors they're in a box over there uh that's partly why i'm doing this uh the other reason is i'm hopefully going to get these cerakoted that nice bronze color uh so there's my ferrodo pads there's still tons left on them but as you can see they've absolutely wasted my rotors so this is about 18 months of i guess you call weekend driving uh, the way these fit is a, there's like a dog bone adapter kit. Uh, the guy's name is Matt and he works at Six Boost. So if you can track that guy down, uh, the kit comes with the dog bones, all the bolts you need. And then I'm actually missing one of the hub centric rings. So there's a ring that goes in there to locate the rotor. Uh, so yeah, you need calipers. Two calipers, two rotors, uh, and his dog bone kit. And they bolt straight up to, let me get my torch in there. They bolt straight up to the factory lines. Now, you probably should use uh, braided lines from here, but uh, John is poor. So, now, suspension setup. So, why are we talking about this? So let me see if I can position the light so I don't have to hold it. Hang on. I'll hold it in this hand. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the upright. So this guy here. Oh, that ain't gonna work. All right. No, that ain't gonna work. I'm gonna hold both in one hand. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is the upright here. Mine's been shortened about 20 millimeters. The reason for that is if you look up here, this is the A arm, which comes out. And when this is longer, if you lower the car, this A arm would be up here. So at an angle coming up here. And what can happen is if you're particularly low or you go over a big bump, it hits up there and pops out the ball joint. What people do for camber also is you can buy these adjustable. Now, having unshortened uprights and having a ball joint just here at an angle, what happens is if this hits the top, ball joint has nowhere to go, so it pops out, or even just at such a steep angle that it's at, it's no good for the ball joint. The ball joint wants to be pointing perpendicular because on the aftermarket things, they've got a circlip here. So ideally you want your force on your circlip perpendicular. So I think these might be shortened 30 millimeters because if we can see down here, I don't know whether you can see. Oh yeah, just in there, here, just there is an RCA. So that lifts it up uh, 30 millimeters, and then which corrects the uh, 
corrects the angle of the lower control arm, uh, raises this up 30 millimeters, but then you've got to take 30 millimeters out of the top. Now, I believe you can probably take less, so 20. See, I assumed that because I had 30 mil RCAs in the bottom, I needed to take 30 mils out of here. And what happened was with my offset wheels, so mine are nine and a half by plus 33, my 23540 tires would hit this ball joint. So I, with my offset wheels, can only run 22540s or it hits this ball joint. So that's why I sort of, I showed you the tires. Uh, now, also, what goes hand in hand with shortened uprights is extended lower control arms. So, uh, this guy here has been extended 25 millimeters. Some people extend them 35 millimeters. And with a shortened upright and an extended LCA, you actually have a decent amount of camber, so much so that you shouldn't need adjustable upper arms unless you have super aggressive wheels then you may need extended LCAs, and then you might need an adjustable thing at the top. But what a lot of people do first is they go adjustable up here, and in my opinion, it's the wrong way to go about it. Suspension has a geometry, so angles, the angle of this guy up here, this A-arm, the angle of the lower control arm, etc. And by short, when you lower the car, so say the car's lowered by 20 mil or 30 mil, by shortening the upright, extending the LCA, you're correcting the geometry of the suspension because Toyota knew what they were doing, like their engineers, they set it up correctly in the first place. Uh, so there you go. Uh, yeah, you want it to be as close to factory as possible. Uh, so that's that. I'll show you the other side just for argument's sake. This side still has the... See, this is a little hub-centric ring I was talking about in here. Um, and these were drilled and slotted rotors originally, and now they're, like, super smooth. And, in fact, when I measure them with calipers, they're too narrow. They're not, uh, they're not sort of within spec anymore and yeah this see this ugly thing that's why we're we're gonna uh cerakote the rotors actually one other thing and you don't well i didn't need to do it on this side but your wheel well if ever you're lowering or whatever you get a jzx particularly on this passenger side see this seam it's had to have been bashed in uh to allow for clearance of the wheel um, now I've actually stayed with the JZX90 setup, but what a lot of people do is they go with shortened knuckles, which is down here. I'm not going to try and show it to you because I can't get the torch in there, but this here is called the caster arm. And what people do, because I've still got JZX90 lower control arms, I have to use JZX90 caster arm because the two bolts that go into the LCA change they're different for JZX 100 and 110 so what people do is they use JZX 110 uh, caster arms and I think does it push it forwards further e yes it does so they must maybe they push it further and also it's got more clearance, it's got more of a bend. So if you do have a, uh, an angle kit, when the wheel turns inwards, it doesn't foul on this guy here. Uh, so I've still got JZX. They're identical except for the two bolts that this caster arm bolts into. Uh, I guess one other thing I can show you, that's probably a bit too hard to see, but if you ever get a clunk in the front of your car, Nine times out of ten, it's these bloody things here. 
So I've actually got, you can't really see it, I've got aftermarket uh, Super Pro bushes in there, which are polyurethane, uh, and I guess they last a long time, they're a bit stiffer. But yeah, if you're ever getting a clunk when you're sort of turning, quite often it's that. Uh, what else has it been in this car? Uh, I mean, yes, this. Uh, sorry, yes, this, this ball joint as well. And then making sure that those two doodads up there are nice and tight. Um, oh, and also what I actually just did was, see the bushing at the eye of the shock? Uh, they often collapse too, so I have just recently replaced those. Uh, because my car had gotten so low on this side that it had bent the guard out, which is very frustrating. Um, but yeah, there you go. That is JZX90 100 and I guess 110 front suspension set up. Um, there are people who shorten these uprights. Uh, you're not meant to use it on the road, uh, so that is for competition use only. Same with the extended LCAs if they've been cut and shut. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of people run them, but uh, you're not really meant to weld cast metal. Uh, but, you know, we do what we have to do. Also, uh, did I mention these rotors are 350 millimeters? So they might look not look very very big on camera. Uh, same with the brakes, but they're absolutely massive compared to the uh, original stuff. Oh yeah, actually, one last thing: the master cylinder that I use, so the brake master cylinder, is actually from an Evo. Uh, it is one and one sixteenth inch. Uh, JZX100 Master is typically one inch, but there are some JZX90s that are one and one sixteenth inch also, but they may have a different bias. I know some people have used the one inch JZX Master with these brakes and they says it operates fine. Uh, mine with the Evo Master uh, with the JZX100 rear brakes, it all works fine. Uh, and my, I, it has, the Evo Master has a T coming off it, and I use that for the feed for my clutch line because I've got a Willwood uh, clutch master. So I've got my brake slave, it's got a little hose coming off to the clutch master, uh, and that, you know, it just all works well as a system. But... You don't need the Evo Master to run these brakes. I just happened to see one and I bought one. And uh, yeah, it also feeds my uh, feeds my Clutch Master as well. So there you go. Thanks for watching.